Okay, okay. Yeah. good afternoon. Welcome, everybody. Uh, very nice to see there's so much interest in the topic of leadership development through coaching uh, within the Crive Network. Um, I will shortly introduce myself and uh, give some practical uh, information, and then we can start. Uh, my name is Joyce Makota. My roots lie in social cultural sciences, um, and I have a work experience in two large uh, corporate organizations in the Netherlands in the field of human resources uh, and management development. For 12 years now, I'm a coach in uh, dual career skills uh, for uh, student athletes at the Cruyff Academy in Amsterdam. And for three years now, I'm a professor for the English uh, modules of leadership and human resources uh, for the Cruyff Institute in Barcelona. Um, for the practical part, uh, there are two tabs in the left right side of your screen. Uh, there is a chat side there. You can maybe say hello to everybody, uh, maybe some, somebody you know. Uh, and who's joining again as well. So you can say hello or say hello to Femke and James. And there's a questions tab as well. And you can use the questions tab for questions you might have for Femke and James. And throughout the webinar, I will uh, pick out some of the questions and at the end, we'll see what questions are left as well. So I have some questions prepared uh, alongside the slides uh, on which James and Femke will answer. And then again, as I said, you can ask your own questions as well. Uh, but then, enough about me and enough about the practical part. Um, it's time to uh, give our guests a warm welcome. Hi, Femke and James. Hi, hi. Welcome, everyone. I think James is not uh, in it again. <laughs> yeah, he is here, but he, he had, was a bit of a dog in his system. Maybe. Well, Femke, uh, you, I, I wanted to, to introduce you as a former, but you said, no, don't say that. I'm a not active swimmer at the moment. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you recently stopped with professional swimming. Yeah, like uh, uh, five days ago, I retired. Yes. So, so recent, uh, uh, recent information. And uh, but you were, uh, uh, among other things, you were an Olympic Olympic gold winner at the four time hundreds uh, freestyle. Uh, James is a former football player, uh, and at the moment he is a team manager at National League club Chesterfield FC. Uh, so we'll see now if James get, comes back. But I think we should uh, we should start. Uh, the thing that bonds us, um, us three, I, would, I must say, is the mastering coaching. Uh, all different editions, but we all did the mastering coaching. Um, and in this webinar, I will talk about the relevance of leadership uh, and developing your own leadership style in the field of coaching. Uh, Femke and James, you will share your experience with us uh, in personal leadership and in leading others as well. Uh, thank you very much in advance for sharing your exper experience and knowledge with us uh, and showing us a little bit of an insight in your personal and professional lives and in your way of working. Hi, James. Are you there now? Yeah, I came back. Sorry about that. The connection yeah, uh, went. That's okay. So I'm back now. I shortly introduce you and I mentioned as well that the, the thing that bonds us three is the mastering coaching. I introduced the topic to us shortly. So uh, to begin with, uh, our inspirator, John Cruyff, always said, uh, you cannot coach others if you cannot coach yourself. Um, so there you are. I've introduced you both. And there is Johan. Uh, you cannot coach others if you cannot coach yourself. Uh, and that's all about personal reflection and personal leadership. Uh, maybe, James, can I begin with you uh, in um, sure. uh, working on your uh, self-reflection and self-knowledge? How do you do that? Well, when I joined uh, the Master in Coaching, when I was, what, so that was five years ago, six years ago, um, a lot of my technical and tactical coaching had been based around what I learned off others on the pitch, etc. But the Master in Coaching opened me up to personal reflection and to be a reflector. So um, ever since that moment, I've started an individual plan which I still work with Martin on. Martin Van Heeswick, who was one of the mentors there. Um, I still work closely with him. Probably it went from lecturer to uh, mentor to friend now, Martin, probably now in the process of my own career as I've gone into management myself in the last three years. So um, I have objectives every 12 weeks based around competencies of being a leader. So those competencies will be broken up into myself. It might be a, um, a media competency, so obviously you have to deal with the media in my work, um, pedagogy. So how do I impart knowledge of my own knowledge onto others? And that might be communication in terms of managing upwards or managing downwards or managing around my peers. So there's a whole host of things, but centrally, um, it always comes back to my leadership values. So, um, which I'm sure I'll share as we, as we go on the next hour, but, um, that's probably the answer really 
um, personal reflection on different objectives around competencies to be a master, a master coach. Yeah, so you build it up around objectives you have and then you choose certain specific uh, competencies to work on. Specific, yeah, and, specific and look, yeah, the more I show in the next hour, it'll be a bit clearer because obviously that's a yeah, big right. spiel. But once I show the slides, it should um, be easy to understand and follow. Yes. And Femke, how did you work on uh, finding out your own core values? Um, yeah, I, like, I really like the part you said about your self-reflection because I was thinking to myself, like, how did I used to do it? Uh, I asked like people that were around me in my inner circle, so like my coach, Marcel Wouda, and uh, uh, also my physio, Jan Herber. So I asked them sometimes to observe me so they could see what I was doing and how I was, uh, yeah, like working through all these competitions. And they gave me a lot of insights and I, I really listened to that and I really took it to heart. And all, also every year I ask a few people, like, what do you see, what I can improve? Um, so that's, I think it's nice to, because sometimes you just stay in your own head and you think you're doing the right thing and you have some, um, how do you say this, uh, blind spots. So uh, I, I used other people for it as well. And that's also what I really liked about the mastering coaching because there were a lot of different people, not in my inner circle, who could help me find the blind spots. Yeah, great. Yeah, great. Um, and then you, you already talked about objectives and competencies, uh, James. And going a bit further on that, um, coaching yourself uh, is, also, is, is about self-management as well. And how do you do that in, in a busy life, uh, working around uh, uh, developing yourself, but as well coaching others? How do you organize it all? It's particularly hard now. I've got a six-month-old boy. Uh, when I get in, it's <laughs> I don't get a lot of time because uh, I'm past uh, young Arthur straight away. So it's a case of reflecting with one hand, and then I have him in the other hand. No, but um, it's very, I guess, along my journey um, from coach to manager now. Because I was a first-team coach when I went on the course, and then I was an assistant, and now an out and out manager. I think. Um, I found it hard in terms of the biggest challenge is time. So time to reflect. But once I find the time and I make the time to write my reflections um, and reflect with Martin, etc., and and other people, not just Martin, because I have other influences on my life. Um, you feel so much better for it and, and so much clearer. That's the way I like to work. But it's, it's about being a, an individual along the journey. So me writing my reflections has the biggest impact, but reflecting in different ways for different people may be more suitable, but for me, my plan and writing the reflections on the objectives over a 12 week period um, gives me some sort of identity and a way forward on the next action plan. The next action plan could well be that I haven't fulfilled or improved as much as I wanted on the original objective. So, um, yeah, so I think that's the answer to that is um, time management as you go on your journey is the biggest challenge for me. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yes. And then, uh, and that's, I think that's one of the skills uh, you already mentioned that one, uh, time, time management in coaching or leading, uh, leading skills. Um, and it's a, a nice uh, a quote from Karen Afram, one of the professors of the master in coaching. And I know she's listening here. There she is. Hi, Karen. <laughs> Good to see you. Mystery guest here. <laughs> <laughs> the coaching is about observing, uh, which also includes listening and feeling. So it's, it's a lot more about, uh, and, and there's a lot to, to do about about being a good coach and not only, to, only telling others what to do. But uh, Femke, can you tell me something about that? How did you figure out what are the good skills to, uh, maybe you had a lot of coaches, so you can say something about what are good coaching skills. Um, I think uh, what was nice uh, uh, is um, if, if you are working too much, then you're not, you're not doing it right. So I think uh, I also experienced when my coaches were not filling in too much and just listen to me and ask me good questions that I, I'm going to think about. I think that's, uh, it's also a, a sign of, um, of, of trust. And um, I felt uh, they took me seriously because uh, if someone is just filling in for you, you have to do this and this instead of making your, yourself think about what's good for you. Uh, I think that's, uh, uh, it works a lot better than, uh, Still, still, anything out for you? Yeah. So is it, does it mean uh, giving the responsibility to the other? Yeah. So that, yeah. But also, uh, also take. I, I felt um, that they took me seriously. So, for yes. example, I had a French coach, 
uh, and he was very just sending me things like okay do this do that do this do that this is shit this is good this is like just like like that all the time whereas with Marcel Wouda I I uh, every Monday we had a, a chat together and we talked about okay what's going well what's going what, what can we do better and he just asked me a few questions like how do you feel about this and um, this really helped me to think about okay what is he asking from me? What, which way I want to go? Which direction? And I think that's a, I think that's a good sign of a good coach. So, yeah. good listener, basically like a good partner, a good listener, good listener and yes. someone who supports. You. <laughs> yeah, listening and asking, and maybe uh, that's a good one to to to, to go through to the next one, um, because then uh, James, you already said I was uh, changing roles from a coach to a manager, and uh, hearing Femke talk now about uh, mainly listening. Uh, asking questions, uh, taking the other uh, seriously, of course, as well. Um, uh, being a team manager, how do you see this now? Uh, I think that your, your principles of coaching can stay the same. However, when you're leading uh, an environment as the manager, um, it's a case of trying to build trust with your staff and players as well. So it's the ripple effect. So making sure that your philosophy of autonomy and in individuality, which are two of my main leadership values. So autonomy, so players take responsibility. They're intrinsically motivated to improve themselves or empower themselves. So I think that's the biggest motivator in coaching, that they find their own path and you're there holding their hand along their own path. Um, and obviously, I just heard Femke talk about trust. And of course, trust is another leadership value of mine because you haven't got trust in a relationship, player-coach relationship, then you are struggling. So... Um, is there for a me, conscious it, difference but for you between managing and leading in your yes. daily practice? Uh, no, it's the same thing. But what I'm trying to say is that coaching and managing. So if a first team coach position in a in a football club to being a manager um, is, is different because, yes, you, you coach every day. I'm on the field every day, etc. But my time is split because you have to manage upwards. You have to do other duties and you run out of hours in the day to see everybody all the time and you have a squad of 26 players so um, it's in making sure you have the right staff around you making sure that you're aligned in your your values but also respect the other coaches values as well because they may be slightly different but ultimately ensuring that your leadership values are in the ripple effect that come down the pyramid in terms of every player gets a bit through other people in, in your staff so it's very very important who you surround yourself with yeah, clear. Yeah. And then uh, you already said something about it, uh, Femke. Uh, but one of the themes in the mastering coaching is uh, coaching uh, as an opposite to advising. Uh, can you explain a little bit more about that and share your experience in that? Well, I was just uh, thinking about like, what, what if I'm going to be a coach uh, in swimming, for example? I have a lot of experience in that. And I think uh, for me, it would be a uh, Falcao. I don't know how to translate uh, Falcao. <laughs> Pitfall. 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 Uh, to uh, um, to just advise or to say like I did it like this, maybe it works for you, but I'm very aware uh, that no one is the same. Um, so I think the main thing that you need to have is to be curious why someone moves the way he moves, and uh, uh, and maybe if someone asks you like how did you experience that, then you can tell your own experience, but. It's not upfront. <laughs> okay. <laughs> clear. Yeah, that's clear. Uh, and it's, it's there as well. It's, it's a quote of Lisa Atkins in, that in, in coaching and generally, you should coach the, the person and not the problem. But if you have that much of an experience and knowledge yourself in, in, in being a former uh, or an, an, a former athlete, I can imagine that's difficult. Yeah, but it was, it was just uh, interesting to just think about like, everyone is different and my perception is different than someone someone other so i remember one time i was talking with another coach and i said well if i become a mom i'm going to do this and this and this and this and that and then the coach said like that's your perception of being a good mom i was like yeah and th this this example stuck uh stuck with me for well until now yeah. Well, maybe can James, James can tell you something a little bit about that now <laughs> experience of six months <laughs> what's it's what's been, yeah, it's been <laughs> it's been some six months. It does change your life for sure. It's my first, <laughs> so uh, balancing yeah. that and uh, trying to get balanced results on the field, it's uh, it's probably the biggest challenge of my life so far. I can uh, I can tell you. 
Yes, there was an, there was a question in there. Maybe you can we can uh, take a little bit of that now. It was a question in the in the question step that is there a difference in that um, uh, for individuals or teams? So we are talking about uh, looking at everybody's values. We'll go to team culture a little bit later on as well. But is there a difference in your approach, James, to individuals or or to a team? Yes, it's massive for me um, because I have players in my squad that are older than me as well. So you're coming in players that played a lot higher level because we were in tier four. So players that played tier one, they're actually older than me as well. So you have to gain that respect straight away. But in terms of backgrounds, so I have different uh, players from different countries um, in, the, in the change room as well. So you have language barriers um, and obviously different people have different skill sets. So if you go to my core values um, on that presentation that I showed you earlier, I can maybe enlighten you a little bit about how I work with individuals. So I don't know if the presentation is up, is it? Can you get it up for me? Yes. Can you arrange it for us, Xavi? It's just, Thank um, you. if you go to the next page. And then, it, so that's my journey so far in terms of where, where I've come from. Uh, obviously, the Christ on there. If you go to the next page, my values should come up. There we go. So for me, um, a lot of people talk about leadership values. So they talk about um, respect or honesty and they're great words and yeah, they're great values. But the hardest thing for me probably in the last five years was defining those into one sentence and what do they actually mean? So if you look at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven down individuality, for me, it's massive for me, individuality, because people come from different backgrounds, different skill sets. And I like to people to express themselves, whether they're artists, energizers, warriors, whatever they are. Um, it's maximizing that skill set, but also improving maybe some deficiencies, um, etc. But not just on the pitch, in the environment as well. I like people being who they are and getting the best out of people. And I think when you have fun and you express yourself in the environment, you get the best out of people. So that's a massive value for my for, for, for me in the, in the environment here. I hope that answers yeah. the question, okay? Yeah, great, great. Maybe we can go get back to it later. So uh, maybe we will show yeah. some of your slides again. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Yeah. yeah. So. Okay, then um, we had a little bit, a little bit of a conversation about it this uh, before we started already, Femke, um, because I found this article about Femke, um, and I was thinking about uh, how professional sport is a high-pressure environment. So there are a lot of focus goes to winning or losing, uh, and I found this uh, this article, but now I already learned again that it's it's also about how the media are putting things together because uh, Femke said, I never heard, used the word egoism or selfishness, I never used that word. Um, so uh, maybe Femke, you can uh, share a little bit of the conversation we had just now about, uh, and I think it counts as well for a professional athlete as for a coach or a person in general but in a high pressure context of sports, how do you think about this concept of being selfish or egoistic? Well, when I saw this slide, I was like, mm, what is egoism? And uh, because Karen is here, we just uh, also talked about this. And uh, it's, it's really difficult because everyone else has a different um, perception of this word. And I think for me, Egoism is has a little bit of a negative uh, vibe around it. So I don't want to be an egoist, but then, for example, I've not been to the birthday party of uh, one of my best friends for I don't know how many years because I always had competitions. Um, so maybe that's egoism. But on the other hand, I just think that if you just take, take, take and take, then it's egoism. But if you find like a, a right balance, uh, for example, uh, when we are in a hotel with all the different teams uh, from uh, for a world championship, for example, we always have a buffet and you can take all the potatoes so no one else has something left or you can just take what you need and then there's something left for the rest. So I think that like it's, it's about a balance. And of course, I make decisions that are in favor for myself. Uh, but I think... Well, what I said, like it's in balance. So if it's just only all the time in favor for yourself and not for someone else, then it's egoism. But I don't really like the word, but maybe because I don't want to be an egoist. <laughs> <laughs> Say something about the core values again, Femke. <laughs> <laughs> but I think in this article, what they meant is um, uh, sometimes you just have to step up for yourself. Uh, and sometimes 
that is in disadvantage from someone else. Uh, well, then I'll, I'll go to the next slide, slide uh, immediately. <laughs> of course, there, there was an example eh, in which you had a conflict um, for a place in the Olympic team. Yeah. Yeah. How did that work? Yeah, it's very hard and I still don't like to talk about it because it's uh, it's still very painful. But uh, what happened is that, uh, well, that I knew if I'm not going to step up for myself, I'm never going to do it uh, ever again. Um, so, um, yeah, it was it was extremely painful, but I had I had to step up for myself and uh, and I did. Yes, so, as, yeah. as I said, it's a high pressure environment and, and it, it is about winning and losing and about uh, wanting to perform. James, how do you see that working uh, with uh, with the football teams? In terms of which bit? Because it was a little bit... Uh, yeah, in, in terms of, uh, of the selfishness you need to, to maybe to succeed in, in sports for yourself as a coach or, or a player. How do you look at that and yeah. what, in, in with regard to maybe to your personal yeah. values? Yeah, quite a bit of um, uh, work I do is with players when they're coming in around the breakfast area in the morning. I make sure my doors open, etc. And they come in and making sure they're just giving them a little tap to remind them about the extra work they can do, or could you, they improve certain things? How they're feeling about? I don't know. I had the striker in today. He scored eighteen and eighteen, but it's about trying to maximise that. He's in a really good vein, uh, vein of form, but talking to him about what extra practice he could do maybe to improve a certain finish with his back to goal that he didn't quite succeed at on Saturday, um, bringing clips to me, etc. So it is about being selfish in the environment to maximise your skill set for sure. Um, but it has to come from them. They have to empower themselves, the athletes, and it can't come from the coach telling them. Um, you can guide them slightly, subtly, uh, but it has to be empowered by them because they're the, the masters of their own destiny. I believe in that. Yeah. Okay. Great. We talked a little bit about uh, the, the looking at uh, the way you look at, uh, at people, and maybe we can go through the next uh, thing because I will introduce it first before the video starts playing. Um, is that um, well, Kruif, Jan Kruif was not only an excellent football player; um, he was more than that. So we will show you a short video, and then I'll ask the, the follow-up question uh, after that. So looking at this, and um, you already saw, uh, t t t told something about it, Femke, of being a friend as well. You're not only the professional athlete, you're the friend, the friend as, well, as well, of which you cannot uh, attend uh, the birthday party, for example. And Johan was, of course, uh, an adept and a developer of the total football um, concept, but he, he looked at people in a holistic way as well. So he was always, always looking at the whole person uh, to see where the strengths li uh, lie uh, and how, do you, uh, how they could develop them. Um, so maybe uh, for you first, James, and how do you learn from other aspects of life, of yourself, now being a young father, for example, <laughs> but of your athletes as well, uh, to coach them better? Um, my, ref my reflections have changed slightly. Um, I would say that because you're going from meeting to meeting or media uh, to media or coaching, and then you're speaking to the CEO, or you're speaking to the chairman, or then you're setting up your tactics for a game two games in three days sometimes. So it, it, you're rushing from one thing to the other. So I think a different type of reflections in between. You can have quick snapshot reflections. Could I have done that better? How did that go? I think you can learn an environment like that. Um, but also, um, obviously, now I'm a young father. The, the biggest lesson in life is is my son. Um, patience. Um, guiding him through the different months he's been alive so far. You can learn so much and it brings so much pride to what you're doing. And it's probably the overriding feeling is, is to the purpose why you exist, really, to be honest. So it's, an, it's a question that was asked me six years ago, purpose for existence. Yes, coaching is a big part of my heart and who I am, if I drew, if I drew myself. But obviously the biggest 
um, thing on that drawing now would be my son and my and my partner. So, yes, on your journey, you can learn so much um, along the way. And definitely, I think professional and personal is amalgamated in into one person, you as the leader. Yeah, so I talk to, to the students a lot about that as well. Leadership is a, is, is a practical profession. Uh, you can learn something about, uh, about books, but it's about gaining experience and, and learning yes. things. And now, as you see, you learn new things from, your, for, from yourself even. And does it change your perspective as well to, uh, to others in how you coach and, uh, and guide others? Yeah, I think, um, look, on my, on my wheel of um, my energies, I bring a lot of red energy to the, to, to the room. That's just natural. Um, I've got a bit of blue, a bit of analysis um and yellow in, inspiring others i find that i find that quite easy to, to reach to find those energies but a big um part of me that i've been trying to develop over the last five years particularly in the last two years has been my green which is um supporting and empathy um that's just you know we're built up in different ways i think certainly um my son has had a good influence on increasing uh, or reaching empathy with less energy it takes a lot of energy for me to sometimes ask that but i'm not ashamed to say that that's that's just a weakness of mine in terms of um stopping and asking um i'm okay at it um but i find it really easy to reach red energy and, and motivate and inspire and ha and have a vision so for sure for me understanding myself as i go along the journey um influences such as my son etc and is helping me with my empathy for sure so you, you can take stock of that in your personal life to help you in your professional life. That would be advice from, from, from me on that. Yeah, great. Great to hear. And Femke, you already said something about um, being taken serious um, and, and somebody asking questions and listening to you. And maybe that's looking at the total person as well, I, I can imagine. How do, you see, how do you see this? Oh, yeah. I found this question also very difficult um, because I, I don't really... I'm not sure if I 100% understand the question, actually. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think, um, like, uh, how can I explain it? Um, so, I think you just find, um, like, blocks on the road. And sometimes you hit the block, like, a few times after, uh, more, more times than once. And, um, and sometimes you just feel you get through and then there is something else. So I feel like there's always, always something that comes on your path or someone that says something, or for example, that one coach that told me about the perspective. So uh, that's how I learn from other aspects. So the same in the same time I'm growing, I feel that I'm growing. And then, uh, so I feel like, okay, now I managed to to deal with this. And, and, and then you grow into another block that can help you grow. Does that make yes. sense? <laughs> yes, yeah, yes, I think it does. Because maybe you can um, hear again, and, and, and it's not that like you are a coaching teams, but you have been in a team, of course, of different individuals uh, within the swimming context. Uh, and how did you see that maybe coaches um, looked at the different persons in the different teams? And you said, I, I, I experienced a coach who was very much about maybe also a red coach telling you what to do. Uh, but how do, how do you experience that? For example, Marshall does that now um well this is interesting because uh uh obviously i have so many relays so then i'm with four girls and or two girls and two men but let's take the example four girls and uh we all swim 100 meter freestyle but we all need to be uh coached and trained differently to get uh maximized our uh, result so for example if you take renomi i train very different than than she did uh and also she's a very different person. So uh, I like to talk deeply and I want to feel connected with my coach, whereas maybe someone else needs to be more, uh, feel a bit more distant with the coach. I'm not saying that Renomi is, but just a, uh, an example. And I thought it was so nice that um, you can prepare for the same event uh, together, but in a different way and also be a very different person and still uh, do the same thing. Yes, yes. And you, you talked about this as well, uh, James. You said uh, your I mean, if two of your core values are the autonomy of, of players and individual individuality, you said. Uh, how do you do this besides an open door policy uh, in the morning? How do you do this uh, in, in coaching or, or creating a team culture? And looking at the persons. 
it, it'd be impossible to do that in a in the environment that I work in in terms of um, reaching out to everybody myself. So again, I would reiterate that it's so important that you surround your staff, um, you, you surround yourself with staff that counterbalance who you are. So empathy is potentially somewhere, some uh, an area where I can improve. So I ensure in my staff that I've got someone with high empathy, um, et cetera. So you can, then you can start touching all everybody in the change room regularly every day. If you build yourself a staff that are similar to you and have the same energy as you, then the team will only get that one energy. So it's very important who you, who you recruit around you to take the team forward. Um, that would be number one. Number two, we make sure, so I've got players, certain players on individual plans. So they have, similar to myself, my own leadership plan, they have plans where they have their own objectives as players. And they know some players need the reason why they put their boots on and, and go out and they want, I want to do, I don't know, 20 repetitions or whatever, because people seem to shy away from telling these days. They're scared of telling the athlete. Well, actually, I believe in telling sometimes. Because when you come in at half time and perhaps you've got 15 minutes, you spend five minutes with the analyst and then you want to do your team talk. You haven't got time to ask everybody. So sometimes you do need to tell and you need to be strong at that. But at the same time, you need to be able to ask and know the right time and also know right, the right energy to bring into the change room. So um, it's a counterbalance to make sure individu individuality comes through. Some players re react to, to telling better than others. So you have to learn um, their ways. And, and what they perhaps prefer to learn, their learning styles. Yeah. And that's so individual plans within a team yeah. plan and individual yeah. styles of athletes. Yeah, but, but it's not just that. It's because it's, it's a team sport and you want to win. So, um, like I said, sometimes you might have to tell because you run out of time at half time, etc. Yeah. yeah, good to hear. Yeah, so it's, it's more a, a situational leadership in that sense. Yes, correct, yeah. Yeah. Okay. We'll get to your uh, your leadership plan later on, I guess, because uh, I was talking no thinking problem. about the next. And then uh, we already talked about knowing yourself to be a good coach, so knowing your own philosophy, knowing your core values. Um, but going one step further, it's about how to develop yourself as a leader or a coach. Um, and as I said, I mentioned at the beginning, we all uh, we all three had uh, have done the, the mastering coaching for one, uh, but. More about that. Um, Femke, can you tell me something about how uh, you work or, uh, uh, practically in your own personal development? Sorry, can you say it again? How do you, how do you, how you're working on your own personal development? How do you do that? Uh, well, I think I already a little bit explained yeah, it. You yeah. said something about feedback, the relevance of feedback uh, yeah. in a circle. Yeah. Yeah. So every year I ask my coach and a few around me, but also a few um, coaches uh, from other countries that I, that I knew and I trusted. I just asked them like, if you see me swim, like, what do you, what do you think I can improve on? So that was basically more like technical skills. And I asked like my inner circle, about, okay, what do you see? Like, uh, because sometimes I'm, I can be stubborn or, uh, I'm, I'm, I get too emotional by, because I want it too much. And it's very nice to, if someone else tells you that, because I know it basically, but it's nice. So I think that's what James meant also. Sometimes you just have to tell the truth. And then uh, I'm, I'm happy with, uh, even if it was so confronting, I'm, I, I, I want to be confronted with my behavior and with my, um, you know, what I'm doing. So, uh, but sometimes that's very nice, especially if you want to do it all, all right. But um, so I think this is one of the key moments that really helped me. And also, well, that I choose to do uh, master in coaching uh, while I was still a professional athlete. Uh, also, was, I think it was also a sign that I thought like I can use it for if I want to be become a coach, but I can also use it for myself in my own career. And that really worked out well because I learned so much that I used uh, into the, the competitions that came up. Yes, yeah, great to hear. And and is there is there a difference? Uh, Paul van Laak asks: Is is there a difference being an awesome footballer or a world class swimmer, um, uh, as opposed to being a, a good or great coach? Is there a difference in there in developing yourself? Because you decided to do it when you were still a swimmer. Mm, well, for me, this worked the best way. I, I cannot say that for James, but. Uh, uh because I just met him. Um, but uh, yeah, for me, it was perfect. Because, uh, but I also, I, I really, I was open to it. I mean, 
uh, I think I had the open mindset in this in this case instead of a uh, fixed like yeah so for me it was very important yeah okay and James you already talked about uh, writing down your reflections and taking time to do that as a relevant factor in your development uh, can you tell us now maybe a little bit more about your uh, leadership uh, plan yeah sure um, I, I think the most important thing I learned from the master in coaching was vulnerability I think that that maybe I thought that I had an open mindset before I came on that course in 2015 or I think it was 15. Um, I think vulnerability is the biggest thing for a coach to open yourself up because um, for me anyway, um, because I found that the hardest thing is to write about my feelings. That's just, you know, and once I broke through that wall, um, I didn't come a blubbering mess or anything like that, but I could speak about my feelings openly be self-critical but also um give myself praise when i need to as well as a balance so i don't i can show my personal plan a little bit just to give an example if you want to talk about the competencies i don't know if we've got time but we can if you want no problem you can show a little bit yeah we can yep yeah so i think i put it up thank so, you yeah if you just go uh, go forward um yep keep going so if you talk about my if you go back to there it's all if you just go back one it's very very important to make sure um, you have long-term objectives, but also short-term objectives. And I, I, I basically base my short-term objectives on what I'm doing day in, day out for this season. So can I tick them off? Um, but obviously, number one, um, and that gives you an example, number one is being the best father I can be is number one because it's the most important thing in my life. And then after that, everything comes second, third, fourth, fifth. They're still very, very important. Um, but it sort of shows a mixture between professional and personal coming together to be the leader you want to be. Uh, I think it's massive. So um, if you just go on, um, that's the situation where we're at. So if you carry on, so it's always making sure you work in, the, in a situational environment. If you just go to the next next slide. So it just gives you an example. That That's just a review, uh, a quick snippet, and then I'll send that to my mentor and he, he would also have his own thoughts and then we would talk about it. Um, so... My objectives were um, my reputation in terms of my brand. Can I improve that in the media? Can I be um, speak better or whatever and how I was going to do it? And then it's a reflection on that. And then um, we had seven or eight games at the start of the season. So it's ensuring we didn't lose the title in the first seven games. We're top at the moment, so that's gone well. But how was I going to do that? What are the main things and how I found it? And if you go to the next slide, I think there's a couple more objectives, never more than three or four. So the third one was, yeah, I was I was reading some books around emotional intelligence um, and being a little bit more self-regulated on the sideline, etc., and be raising my awareness of perhaps my emotions. I'm quite an emotional coach, so uh, it's probably quite uh, <laughs> a lot of energy going on the sideline. So it's controlling myself in important matters and of the game or decisions that don't go your way or or do go your way. Um, so yeah, that was just me and improving that side of it. So that was just like a, a little review I do after every 12 weeks, but along the way, obviously I have informal reviews and talked to Martin and Gary Waddock, who's a, he's managed 500 league games. Um, so I have those two that I speak to regularly and, um, I do it that way. And if you, and these are sparring, sparring partners you for just you. Carry you said... on, it just goes into, yeah, yeah. yeah so Martin okay. Van Heeswijk's obviously a, ment uh, a lecturer on the, on the Cruyff, we're still very close. Um, and, and Gary's a guy that I assisted. He was, he was a manager that I assisted. So I still talk to him regularly every week and bounce things off him, as well as some of these objectives as well. So, um, and then you get some, some honest feedback, 360 feedback, which is always important. Um, yeah, so that's, that's how I work. But if you go, yeah, so if you you go on, it's just on my competencies then. Oh, my barriers. Yeah, they're just barriers to my development. And then if you if you flick on, it just goes into my competencies of how. So if, if you look at this first one here, I've got eight competencies or seven competencies. So this I call this one the JR competency because it's um, okay. Where am I? So on the on the right hand side, you see the the graph of red, amber, um, green, and gold. Gold is world leading, so I want to be a Premier League manager. Um, how do I compare to them? Um, but obviously being open myself as well, and um, so. You, yeah, so you have leadership values on there. You have self-reflection um, areas I can improve. Every leader needs a follower. You need followers if you want to be a leader. So how am I doing? Are the change in following me? Are the support base following me? What are the media? Do they, do they show me in good light, etc.? So they're just examples. 
um, and then the competencies go on to other things such as pedagogy, etc. So that's how I work because I need that structure. Um, Femco could be completely different, um, but what you must be is true to yourself as a leader because excuse my language, athletes can smell bullshit. So you have to be yourself and you have to have you know, this structure is, is who I am. It, it gives me, a, it makes me aligned. It get, makes me focused um, to where I want to be. Um, I'll be satisfied if I stay at this level for the rest of my, uh, my life. I'm, I'm blessed to, to coach every day, but for me, uh, I, I aspire higher um, and I want to be the best I can every day. And no doubt this plan will go on for the rest of my life. Hopefully when I'm coaching. Yeah, it's a, it's a structured plan. It shows a lot. It's a structured plan. Thank you for sharing for, uh, sharing this personal uh, plan with us, no James. But it, it shows uh, stru the structural, structured way in which you do it, but it shows uh, how you work in it as well, reading books, uh, using some theories as well, because there was a discussion uh, um, going on about... Um, I'll go one slide back here. Um, about the, the, uh, the use of theories. There is not so much theory in the, in the mastering coaching, but you do refer to books and, and the red and blue um, and green uh, theory. Uh, how do you look at that for your, for your personal development? Yeah, I, I think um, you're always learning. So knowledge is part of that. So if you, if you look at, if you carried on in my comments, it's not that you need to, but part of that would be um, pedagogy. So how do you impart um, knowledge that you haven't got so it's always important that I always want to read off other people not just in football but in elite sport or leadership for example um, I just read Seb Coe's book who was an athlete in England um, he was talking about a rival um, runner that he had who was English as well and they went into the Olympics and he lost his I think he was 1400 and he came second and his rival won it unexpectedly and then he had 800 two days later in the in the Olympics and um, no one gave him a chance because the, the rival runner was the world record holder. And it, he, he spoke about those two days and how he managed to flip a, a crisis into, into a masterpiece because he won with a world record uh, two days later. And no one gave him a chance. So things like that, I think, um, coming back from adversity, etc. I'm always reading around it. But also, um, you can have all the knowledge in the world, but you have to experience as much as you can. Um, because you, you learn so much. I, I learn so much off experiences. So um, reflecting on those experiences for, for, for me. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. How do you look at that, Femke? Using uh, books or, or autobiographies of other, other uh, athletes or using theory in developing yourself? Yeah, yeah. I love to read. And uh, so I, I do read a lot of uh, sports books or, uh, yeah, I, I do read a lot. And But I also I just really love to talk about uh, because I'm on the road, I used to be on the road uh, uh, very often, and then I would go for dinner with some of my concurrents that I uh, am also friends with, and I would just talk about like how do you deal with this and how do you deal with that. So I, I was always curious to learn from my concurrents and my colleagues. So I think that's that's also very nice. Uh, I do like to listen a lot of podcasts, um, and then I'm just just picking out what I think is going to be useful for me. So yeah, I, I, I like to uh, to explore. Yeah. yeah, thank you, thank you. And you, you, both of you already talked about uh, how you work on personal reflection, uh, gaining feedback from others uh, to, uh, to, for your own development and coach to coach. Uh, you, you mentioned it already, uh, James, and having two strong people uh, beside you for 360 uh, uh, feedback. And there's one question as well, and you, you showed your own personal plan, and you already said, James, okay, that's, that's my way, it's, it, it works for me. Uh, and Aldo has a question is, how do you coach the players to coach their own teammates? So it's not only about their own personal development, uh, but how they coach uh, each other. How do you go about that? Well, it, it goes back to telling, because I think I turned over 18 players here. So when we took over, we had a squad of 24. So I've turned over 18 players in a year because they the hit rock bottom here. So it was a case of a lot of transformational leadership, a lot of change management. So that was difficult, but also setting the tone of the philosophy that you want on the pitch. So you have to tell a little bit more in the early days because you have new players coming into the environment. You're shaping the ones that are already there um, and you're trying to guide them a little bit more. But now I'm a year into it. The, the environment is set. The culture is set. So when they walk in the building, etc., cetera, it's, uh, there's a lot of fun going on. Yeah, that's important. They have a lot of smiles and faces. But when they hit the grass, they know what's expected. And now they do individual work themselves. They go out early. 
they might stay after they've got they take coaches etc and that's taken probably about nine months to, to do um so that's that's where autonomy comes in because i'm getting players now obviously asking the coaches can we do a little bit more work on this because of this and can we go through some clips and they're bringing in the analysis the analysts into it so you're working in a multidisciplinary way so yeah it, it, it takes time but at the start when you come into an environment as, a, as the leader you might have to tell a little bit more than what you perhaps you want to to shape that environment because you have so many new people coming in and out of that environment so um and and a, a little example would be at half time i don't go in for the you yeah, have 15 minutes i i don't go in for five minutes because i spend time with the analysts on the clips etc but also it gives them time to talk to each other about their own um, performances what they expect of each other and maybe they can communicate increase uh, increase communication because sometimes you don't hear each other on the pitch because the the large attendances yeah yeah thank you and Femke, you uh, uh james showed us his, his personal leadership plan uh, as i one more question about personal development what's your what's your way of of uh, maybe looking at the self-reflection part are you a writer well, I, I looked at it and I was like, whoa, I, maybe I should start doing this. Uh, yeah, I, I, I do write. I, I, um, I like to write. Uh, I have a diary, for example, but I have to be honest, I didn't write in it for a long time. So, uh, But, for example, at the Olympic Games, I, I did write a lot because there are so many impressions. And I think when you write, uh, you give it some, yeah, you can put it in some boxes and just keep it all neat and tidy. Uh, but uh, I didn't. Uh, I don't have the the full uh, thing that James made. No, but maybe I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> I think just on on that is is um, I think yes, part of reflecting is speaking, etc. But I think that they can words can be lost. So it, it's when you when I first started writing my reflections, etc. I was deleting a lot because it's so hard to write about my feelings and stuff. And then you, you just get into a flow and it's there then. And you can also look back as well on how you've improved and how you felt at that moment about that specific thing. I think that um, it's tangible if it's a work, if it's written down. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. It's more that I think for me, to be honest, I have phases where I really do it. And then, so I really like the fact that you do it every 12 weeks. So I used to do the reflections reports uh, when I did when when I did the master in coaching, but I uh, have to admit that I stopped doing it, stopped doing it in that way. But I still reflect. But I I agree. If you write it down, it's 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 more powerful and it's more um, you can more yeah learn more from it from it. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. See, I'm already learning now. I'm going to start my diary. <laughs> Every time we talk about the subjects, it's uh, <laughs> it's food for thought. Yeah, thank you. Um, I had one uh, one other theme prepared. Maybe we can have some other, uh, some more questions uh, from uh, the participants as well. Uh, the last theme I was thinking about and talking about a lot about recently with uh, with my students as well is uh, ethics and morality in coaching and leadership. Um, and you hear a lot of topics, of course, the, the, the more common ones about doping, match fixing. Um, but I think uh, even if you think about how much can you ask of a person in a training context for etc. in professional sports. Um, so I reckon there are many more ethical dilemmas when working as a coach or a leader. Um, so maybe James, for you first, um, how do you deal with those? It's, uh, it's challenging with a uh in the change room so many complex personalities um but i do like mavericks in my team i like you know because you need that you need your artistry on the pitch and sometimes the artists can be the the biggest challenge to to your ethics and to your leadership values but it's also again it goes back to individual individuality it's sometimes you might have to be a bit more patient with some players than, than others other athletes um but also there's a saying in england probably not probably not in holland but it was always um leaders used to say when i was growing up in the olden days was um don't do as i do do as i say <laughs> i just think it's 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 just gone now that's just not the case you have to as a leader for sure if you want to be taken seriously in the long run you have to obviously um live by your own values and leave leave, leave, uh, live by the values that you instill into the environment because they'll be the first to catch you out the athletes uh, your team so you need to make sure that um, you practice what you preach for sure yeah so dealing with with ethical dilemmas is the most important part is uh, staying close to your personal values you say yeah yeah, yeah. how's that for you Femke 
yeah yeah i totally agree yeah i think that's also if you stay close to yourself uh it's it's stronger and powerful anyway um i even well maybe it's an out topic example but uh, uh be, because i retired I, I got a book uh my girlfriend made a book for me from all of the people that i swam with and they they wrote something and i could really feel when someone was um like really writing from the heart you know so i could feel it was more powerful when i when i wrote those uh open-hearted uh, messages i was crying because i felt this is from the heart and i believe um if you operate that way you will always reach more people or because they know it's from heart to heart you understand what i'm trying to say yeah. so I, I i really believe uh that's uh, i think james said the same uh, uh, at least don't buy the bullshit and uh, i think that's true so so if you stay uh, like close to your own values i believe that's very powerful yeah, yeah. Uh, one of the most powerful things i've done with my team so far is and i took it off martin martin van heeswick he 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 taught me it. it's a clever trick it's a really good way of leading a team environment is is making them accountable for their own values so have a meeting every off season with the team because you have new new recruits and they choose their values as a team and it's always a go-to as a, as a leader or as a manager of that team because when someone steps out of line you know it's going to happen in the, in nine months together in a season you know someone's going to not going to abide by those values it's an easy go-to for them because you just say well how does that fit into the team values and then that opens up the discussion nicely yeah great yeah great well maybe go, going and coming to an end a little bit uh, unfortunately because we only had an hour and maybe so there are some more questions coming up if you want to if you want to ask another question please put it in the questions tab um uh, and and already fm can james very much for for your time and willingness to share your experience and thoughts about uh, the, the topic and you see there's a lot to be said about um well developing your leadership style through coaching um and from being an athlete first and then to, to becoming a coach or maybe femke becoming a coach <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll see that. we'll see yes yeah. uh, i wanted to ask the participants if there's still any questions left we had one more question standing out and there was um uh, what's the best way to empower players to become more intelligent in the game we have an idea would you like me to answer that? Or yeah, Femke? that's okay. Yeah. If you want to. Do you want to answer, Femke? No, you can answer it. Oh, okay, no problem. Um, I had to make them more intelligent. Um, if we're just talking about um, some of my players here, again, it goes back to empowering them. So if they feel empowered and they feel in control of their destiny, I think that that gives the maximum motivation. So they would then tend to watch their games back, um, clip them, bring them to the, the, the staff, do it extra stuff on the pitch, uh, extra practice, and, and obviously be intrinsically motivated to improve themselves. I think that's the key. I think you've got to motivate the, the athlete to, to empower themselves. Yeah, thank you. And, and then Chris asks, uh, what's the most challenging thing about leadership and how do you handle the setbacks with the leadership? What's the most challenging? Yeah, I think for me it's difficult to answer because I don't feel like a leader, and you know, I, I I'm not. Uh, the, so I think this this question is uh, is uh, one for you, maybe uh, James as well. <laughs> okay, no problem. What was the question? Uh, what's the most challenging thing in leadership, and how to handle setbacks within leadership? Um, dealing with losses, because I'm a I'm a really bad loser. <laughs> so I, everything I'm I geared to is winning. I want to win at all costs. Uh, it's that extreme <laughs> because I need to win, right? So dealing with a loss when I get on the coach, if it's an away trip or whatever, when I win, it's forgotten about when I get on the coach because you're on to the next opponent straight away in my mind. Um, obviously, you reflect on that and you do your clips, etc. Then that and, and you send out and you have the analysis meeting or whatever, of course, but my mind's already on to the next opponent. When you lose, um, it's making sure that I don't, um, I'm not too self-critical of the performance uh, team and my own performance, but also I don't dwell too much. I think that's the biggest the biggest challenge in making sure I don't take home to my lovely son and, and, and partner. Yeah, that's a good thing, yeah. I have one more here. Uh, it's, it's Jamie and Jamie said, do you believe in the philosophy that there are no bad people, just bad behaviors? 
or do you believe people need to be coached out of a team or a situation? And if so, how do you initiate that? Did it happen once, James? You had to set somebody out of the team? Well, I've changed 18 out of 24, so <laughs> quite a few, but <laughs> that was more on performance and where we want to go. Uh, that's not to say that they're bad people. Uh, I pride myself. I like to pride myself on um, the right exits for, for athletes out of the environment. So um, it's just supporting them all the way, but it, that's not just ending that support when they leave the environment. Um, I'm always open to every athlete I work with, um, even if that relationship hasn't worked out well in terms of what they, their expectations were. Um, so no, I don't believe there's bad people. I see, to try and see the good in everybody, um, but I'm, I'm not shy in having a, a firm conversation if I need to, because... Mm, let's hear what um, you said before. Let's hear the accountability of own values. Does it help here as well? Yeah, because as long as I know that my values are being ticked along with the conversation, if it's an exit, um, for sure. Um, I haven't really had any bad people so far, so I can't really give examples or anything like that. I've only met people that only want to be the best they can be, really, in terms of, of the environments I've worked in. So I can't really answer that at the moment at this stage in my career. But yeah. did you ever had, for example, that the chemistry between a few players were a lot better than if you just look at their individual skills uh, and just, the, for example, three players, uh, they had like a great connection. But if you look at them individually, you might not pick them for the spot you had in mind. Yeah, for sure. I, I always, when I'm setting up a team, it's always about the balance of the team and sometimes personal relationships in terms of how they get along on the pitch or away from the pitch comes into it, of course, because yeah, 11 strong relationships is stronger than 11 individuals that play their own way. So we have individual objectives for every game and unit objectives, nothing crazy as well as a sprinkle of talent, because you can't forget the talent of the individual. So that individuality needs to come out within those objectives. If you don't have any team objectives, any individual objectives along the way in them units, you're never going to have a successful result. So um, when I set up a team, I, I like to set up with artists. So I always balance with artists, which are gold. I put, put colours up. Red for warriors. They'll run for a brick wall for you. Um, fight to the end. And then you have the greens, the, the energizers. And then you have the blues that the controllers, that's how I set my team up. So um, I think that answers the question in terms of balancing the team up. Yeah, that's cool. You should start doing this in swimming as well. <laughs> yeah, but you only won in swimming normally. Okay, you have relays. The relays. Yeah, relays. Wow. Yeah, but I mean, for example, the the place you have in the relay makes a huge difference. It's not it's not just a hundred meter. The the one that leads off is a is a different person than number four yeah, yeah. you already talk, talked about difference in training and difference in, in personality yeah but also the, the for example the the lead off is the one that um needs to 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 take the to has to you know, to carry the res, uh, res, responsibility um the the second the second and the third is more like a safer space because you're in the middle and the fourth one is has also carries a lot of uh, responsibility because he has to finish it so we really look at the um, the characters how someone fits in in the relay um, yeah. and that it's also about your character so which place you have in the team you mean yeah 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 of course yeah yeah, yeah. see so, yeah, so yeah i was looking if there are any more more questions um <sighs> As much as I agree with James, I want to win, I want to be the number one in the stats or want, uh, whatever I'm going. As much as loss hurt, do you find that after a loss you progress, develop and learn? Rather than feeling you've made it due to a win. Uh, 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 I'm hungry whether we win, draw or lose, I can assure you. So uh, there's only one target for me here and that's winning the, the, the title this year. We're in number one spot at the moment. Um, we're nearly halfway through the season, so it's making sure we remain focused. But of course, you you learn from wins, you learn from draws, you win, you learn from losses. The learning never stops, whether that's individual uh, on myself, uh, learning myself on the wheel of, of learning, or everybody in the environment. Of course, we want to make this a really accessible and a vibrant culture where learning is at the forefront. So, of course, yeah, I take that on board, and yeah, we're certainly aligned with that. 
Yeah, I understand. Yeah, well, I'm looking at the time, and we. Uh, I'm sorry, but we have we have to stop. I think now uh, because of the time. Um, thanks again, Femke and James, for sharing your views on, on leadership, and uh, very inspiring to hear uh, how you work on on, on dis dis discovering your core values, staying true to yourself, and how you work with that and doing the things that you do. So thank you again for that. Um, I wish you a very much of luck, uh, Femke, in the career after swimming. Thank you. Uh, and James, you in um, now being a dad. <laughs> <laughs> I and need a lot of winning... luck. Keep coming with the luck. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and a winning championship, of course. So we'll, we'll follow you. you as well. So thank, thank you very you. much. And for the participants, uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, I hope it has, has inspired you to think further about your own work uh, and how to work on uh, developing your leadership style uh, in coaching. So thank you, everybody. And hope to see you again. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.